in simple terms, what is data mining? Okay. Well, uh, okay. Data mining is actually the technology involved with answering complex queries on uh, very large data sets. Uh, in more recent times, it's often been referred to as big data or uh, even uh, data science, uh, something which is sort of becoming a, a field uh, of its own today. Um, okay, but uh, that's, uh, I think that's really, it's in a sense, a marketing term more, more than any, anything else. Um, okay, so next question. I think it was pretty insightful. Um, what are some of the most interesting applications of your work? Uh, okay, well, okay. Uh, first of all, um, what I really do is I write books. And I hope books have applications in the sense that people read them and um, they do uh, use what's in the books to solve problems. Uh, unfortunately, it's very hard for me to, um, to find out what use is made of, of the material. Uh, um, I can think of a couple of instances, one where my co-author my co uh, Alejo was contacted by a chemist um, who um, you know, just told him about how he had used uh, an algorithm uh, that he found in the book. Uh, excuse me. Uh, um, but, uh, okay, beyond that, um, uh, in a sense, uh, Alejo and I won the Turing Award for uh, a, a rather, what I think, a rather simple idea for uh, generating parsers in programming languages and, and doing it um, in sort of the right way in the sense that it, uh, it enabled you to write a, pi a parser uh, easily for pretty much any, any programming language. Um, and in particular, that idea led to a, uh, the Unix uh, command yak, uh, which uh, really for several decades was the, the, the standard way to uh, uh, to create a, a, a parser for a, uh, which is of course a, uh, the, a, a core part of, of, a, of a compiler for any programming language. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, I should mention, of course, that it was Steve Johnson who took the mathematical ideas uh, that Al uh, Aho and I had, had developed uh, and turned it into, you know, actual software that was easy to use and um, really made the the job of creating a parser, you know, uh, an afternoon's work. Um, okay, I. I would also, I guess, uh, mention the idea which which became called uh, datalog, which uh, was something that I I think I I started uh, at least contributed to uh, uh, the development. Uh, the the um, see the AI community for well, let's say from its inception uh, around mid. 20th century to pretty much the end of the 20th century, uh, I think uh, was uh, looking at the wrong in the in the wrong directions. That is, it was trying to simulate human thought. That this was that this was the core of AI, and uh, um, it's it's very attractive. It sounds cool and attracted a lot of research money. Uh, uh, but didn't really, uh, I think, deliver. And, and I, I, I need to contrast that with what has gone on pretty much um, in the 21st century where uh, ideas like machine learning uh, uh, and, and uh, more recently the lang large, things like large language models uh, have had huge effect uh, and, and really solve problems even if they don't do that in a uh, in a way that simulates uh, the human thought. At any rate, I think it was in, in 1984, uh, I uh, wrote a paper uh, in which I proposed datalog. I, uh, I didn't call it that, but that, that was um, 
a, a term that was uh, actually, I, uh, I guess Dave Meyer uh, coined the term, but uh, a, a fairly simple form of logic, something that, that I felt was a good compromise between um, uh, the expressivity that you needed at least for database queries. Remember, I'm really a database guy. I'm not an AI guy. Uh, so I would, um, it, it, it let you express uh, pretty much anything, you know, reasonable to do with, with, uh, with uh, large scale databases. Uh, and, and yet uh, the implementation was reasonably efficient. Uh, and, and that was, of course, the, the problem with the AI uh, approaches that they were just, just proposing wilder and wilder forms of logic that were expressive but failed the test of being being tractable. You couldn't really uh, compute with them. Uh, so the data log, um, I mean, kicked around for, for actually now for several decades. Um, uh, it, it did uh, make the um, the the uh, the SQL uh, stand SQL, of course, is the, is the standard programming language for databases, and uh, it's now part of the standard is uh, recursion in, the, in following the data log sense. Uh, uh, it, it's found some other uh, uses. For example, um, my colleague Monica Lamb uh, actually built a um, um, a code optimizer uh, using data log as a core technology. She said she didn't even realize it had anything to do with it. She just just you know found it in the literature. Um, okay, so anyway, that's uh, I think some examples of the, where I think I've had some impact. And. What was your first exposure to computer science? Ah, okay. Well, uh, let's see. Um, I guess I'd have to start um, after my junior year in college. Uh, this was in 1962. Um, I got a summer job uh, working for an insurance company. And um, at that time, I had this idea I wanted to be an actuary. Uh, an actuary, of course, is a, basically a mathematician who uh, deals with uh, uh, life the design of life insurance policies. Uh, the cool thing about being an actuary is you you get promoted based on passing uh, multiple choice exams, and that's uh, I was I was kind of good at that, so I, I figured I could I could prosper. Um, uh, you know, eventually I just figured out that all I'd be doing is just figuring out when people are going to die and, and that uh, fortunately got into something else. But at any rate, uh, so summer of, of 62, uh, the job they gave me was as assistant to the one programmer uh, for a, um, I think it was a Burroughs 200, which is, is you, some, it's a computer you probably never heard of, but it was, uh, think of it as a, a large desk and you programmed it by sticking pins into the right holes. Okay, so um, it had like a like hundred words of memory, and and so if you wanted to add the contents of word twenty five to the the cu accumulator, which was the uh, the one register that the machine had, uh, you'd stick a pin in the A, and then then in another row the the two, and then a third row the five. Um, and then the next summer, uh, uh, after I graduated uh, from undergraduate work, I got a job uh, at Brookhaven National Laboratories. This is um, a, a, basically a physics installation. They have a, had a, a big cyclotron at, at the time. Uh, and uh, there, they, they had a, an IBM 7090, which was the state-of-the-art computer in, in the days. This is, again, 1963. And they taught us all Fortran programming. And also, um, I 
uh, elected to work using uh, was a, a system called FAP, the Fortran Assembly Program. It was the assembly language for the, uh, the IBM 7090. And I spent the whole summer writing a program to identify particle tracks in, in cloud chambers, um, in, in cloud chamber uh, pho photographs. Um, then when I went to uh, Princeton uh, for, uh, for graduate work for the, the next in the fall, uh, I, um, I had to select a track in electrical engineering and I picked digital systems because it was the, the closest to the um, uh, to, to the work I've been doing over the summer, which, which I thought was, was certainly uh, rather intriguing. Uh, at that time, there was no, um, um, you know, there wasn't really no computer science. I think I, um, I guess John Hopcroft joined the faculty at Princeton um, in my, my second year, and he taught a course in, in algorithms. So I learned a little bit about what would sort of become uh, computer science. Uh, but it wasn't until I started working at Bell Laboratories, um, and I think it was in like 1967, uh, my, uh, my boss, Doug McElroy, uh, called the group together and he said, I just heard about this term, and from now on we're going to call ourselves computer scientists. Okay. And that's how I became a computer scientist, basically.